Yo, it's Trevelli. I'm back, and we've got some big news to talk about. Cincinnati is being left out of the college football playoff polls at number six right now. And my question is, does Cincinnati deserve to make the playoff as of right now? And we're going to discuss that in this video. So if you can, please like, comment, and subscribe. Let's get this channel out to as many people as possible. Also, follow me on Instagram and Twitter so you get my daily notifications for when I'm dropping videos, which is going to be Monday through Friday because I'm never slacking. Now, let's jump into the action. Uh, I'm living life like this. Maybe give a little glimpse, maybe give a little so I think we need to have an honest conversation about why Cincinnati is ranked number six in the CFP polls and number two in the AP. What's the difference? Why is this happening? And which side am I on? So all these questions are about to get answered. I just want to start by saying I've done all the necessary research on the data and have pretty much watched all of the top six teams play very closely all year. So I wanted to try and get a grasp for the possible matchups and whatnot. And as of right now, I think the biggest shock to me is that the AP voters would give them number two in the first place if they were never going to be a top four college football playoff team from week 10 moving on. The difference between these polls is massive. Sure, it does look phenomenal before the CFP to be leading at number two or to be in the top four in general, but the public should know that looking back, this is no different in the committee scheme, at least from stopping UCF back in their miraculous 2017 run, except this time Cincinnati has a win on the road at Notre Dame and the college football playoff committee is blatantly being biased towards Cincinnati here for one reason. If Notre Dame beats Cincy at Cincy, same script, just reverse it and give Notre Dame the win, they would undeniably be in the top four of the college football playoff and AP polls unanimously. There would be no like a uh, gap from number two to number six. They lost and they are still ranked number 10. I think that is absolutely ridiculous based on the fact that even if you want to use biased nature from last season to predict this year, since he was in a position to beat Georgia in the bowl game last season, and to say that they would not match up with at least the other top three in the top four is ridiculous. Alabama lost to a worse team in Texas A&M, in my opinion, than Cincinnati. But we can save that conversation for another day. Right now, if you're a Cincinnati fan group of five fan or just in general a fan of college football you need to know that the cfp is everything right now and the ap is worthless from week 10 onwards cincinnati was lucky to have a phenomenal preseason ranking and that has given them a shot even right now for other teams to lose and for them to kind of sneak in but for them to be outright left out is just completely wrong there you have it if you didn't know now you know where i stand and i'll explain why there's three sides to this the people who believe that they should be in period the people People who think that they are lucky to be in even the top 10, which I absolutely disagree with these folks, and outside the box thinkers who know how much money is made with this yearly affair. And there's no way an Alabama, Ohio State, or an Oregon could ever be left out over Cincinnati just solely from a money standpoint. And as of right now, where we stand, those people would be the ones that are right and I would be wrong. Now, luckily, there's still time for Cincy to make it. And as the season goes on, I'll be providing the videos to explain each scenario. But now I'm going to jump into my reasoning for why they deserve to be in regardless of money. Strength of schedule of all of these teams ahead of them are going to be as follows. Georgia, they've played four cupcakes and I mean it. I love Clemson as much as the next guy, but this is an off year for them. They're currently outside the top 25, not even receiving votes, but they're still an FPI top 10 team. Team. Then Vandy, one of the worst teams in the nation, South Carolina, one of the worst teams in the SEC, and UAB, a middle-of-the-line Conference USA team. The rest, I will give it to them. And P.S., they actually performed in every game this year except Clemson, which does not even count when you think about the inconsistencies of Week 1 in college football in general. They do deserve their spot, and I will admit that, so you should know, I come from a good place. I want fairness. They deserve it, number one. Alabama, not so much. They lost to their biggest test at Texas A&M. They played a horrible game versus Florida, who is not even top 25. Miami win doesn't really mean anything because they were playing De'Ara King, who was coming off a major injury. And after that, they pretty much decimated everybody else. Good job for that, but not worth a number two spot. I would give them number three or number four, and that's honest. The number one lost team that deserves to be in is probably them, especially if they have to beat Georgia to get in. I mean, you can put them anywhere in the top four right now, and honestly, no. No one's going to freak out, but one loss in a close game versus Florida doesn't really look good to me. Moving on, Michigan State. I actually like where they are right now. They're the Big Ten front runner with everyone else having a loss. 
being undefeated pre-Michigan, I was like, uh, no. But beating them and having a temporary three spot as long as they can run the table, that includes a win versus Ohio State coming up, Purdue, and closing out with Penn State. They will have more chances to prove themselves. So for now, I have no issue with them being number three. They beat every Big Ten team and a win at Miami early on as well. It just looks good for them. Now, offensively and defensively, holding teams to 20, not too shabby for the Spartans. Now, what I will say is that the committee must value a win versus Michigan at home more than a win on the road versus Notre Dame because besides that, Michigan State has played plenty of teams that are not even in the top 60 like Rutgers, Northwestern, Western Kentucky, Indiana, etc. So I don't know. It's not the worst because if they lose at Ohio State or versus Purdue, Penn State, it's over. Moving on, Oregon. Now I'm going to start dropping some bombs. It's okay to be like Cincy and Michigan State. It's not your fault you don't have the big tough opponents like the SEC, etc. But you got to beat those guys when you play them, Oregon. A loss at Stanford who is currently ranked number 64 in the FPI clearly shows that they are receiving some sort of Nike treatment money because they value the Ohio State win. I get that. No issues. I'm on board even though it was early on, but since he got a signature top 10 win on the road as well, here's the difference between the two teams, guys. They didn't lose to Stanford. They were in a close game with winless Arizona. They barely beat Cal FPI 73 and UCLA who are 43 somehow. So do not give me that garbage that, oh, Cincinnati doesn't play anyone because I agree with that. But hey, at least they win those garbage games. And when they do play teams like Notre Dame, they shut them out 17, nothing going into the fourth and solidly win the game. I'm moving on. Ohio State. Look, I know it's Ohio State. Five stars everywhere. 100,000 people at every single game. But listen, I would honestly still say that Cincy deserves it over Ohio State. Ohio State and Oregon are both frauds this year. And you heard it here first. You're going to find that out in a few weeks. If you don't like it, I don't care. Go somewhere else. Like I just decimated Oregon verbally. I will now prove the same with Ohio State. Let's start with their annihilation of horrid teams. Okay, last Last time I checked, Tulsa and Akron have a combined record of 5 and 12 and both have horrible FPIs. Akron is literally the fourth worst team in the country and Tulsa not much better at 89. They also have less than an impressive win over number 33 FPI Minnesota. The rest of the wins are Rutgers mid 60s, Indiana mid 70s, Maryland mid 70s, and Penn State who is barely a top 25 team right now as we speak. So what do they have in signature wins or even in the strength of schedule that the CFP gives them. It's such a sham. To me, it's such a joke. Like they are not even playing teams that would scare Cincinnati and they lost their biggest test at home versus Oregon. So I don't know what you guys are talking about. If you complain here, I would still put them in Oregon in the best of the rest category at five and six. No problem. Cincy does not deserve to be number six. Now let's get to Cincy. I get their schedule is less than good. It's mediocre. It could even be considered as bad, but they had the win at no Notre Dame and at Indiana by both double digits. They also have not lost a game and pretty much underperformed in the last two weeks, which is why they really got hurt by those polls. But how can you punish a team that's perfect, has a top 10 win on the road, scores 40 and only allows 14 points a game? It's not like they're giving up 60 points like Wake Forest. No, 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 they're not. They're not. They're only giving up 14 a game and it absolutely has to do with money or I do not know what these guys are watching. Let me get a job there. I'll make the right decision. This has to be the biggest sham in college football history. You know why? I'm not a Cincinnati fan, but guess what? It's not right. And I'm not biased to be blatantly putting two fraudulent one loss teams in front of Cincinnati. I get it. If since he loses a game, it's over, but they haven't. And until they do punishing them like this is an absolute fallacy and should never happen. Let me know what you guys think down below. Unless you think that they deserve to be number six, then you should probably unsubscribe because I do not like you. Have a good day, guys. Peace. Uh, I'm living life like this. Maybe give a little glimpse. Maybe give a little glimpse.